Hiya guys, how are we all doing? Good I hope. A lovely uh, rainy but warm and humid day here in Gloucester so um, in the garage Mustang's out in the rain um, getting wet as it would I suppose because it's in the rain. Duh. Um, and here you can see you got the chassis. So done a lot of clean up. Um, can't remember if I talked about this before. Uh, basically when I got the Land Rover new I stripped it um, pretty much every nut and bolt pretty much copper slipped all the nuts and bolts uh, which worked I mean I had I think I had one or two snap um, one of those being the one of the diff bolts which I didn't actually touch so one of the nuts on the stud sorry the, the stud in the axle snapped off um, all the suspension bolts all the little M, M6 bolts all around all just came undone the little bolts that hold along the floor hold them along the sills they all undid so uh, Anyway, I digress. I'm waffling again. I'm, I'm the world's best waffler. So, um, yeah, so here's the chassis. Uh, it was wax oiled from the day I owned it. Um, all inside. I didn't spray the outside. But I think as I talked about before, the, you know that the, the wax oil sort of creeps. So turpentine on a brush, brush it in, wipe it over the rag, brush it in again. And basically we've got the chassis now back to a, a painted state. Now, I've also talked about this rear cross member, which is... A pain in the ass uh, because it's bent like a banana so obviously when they weld it they don't restrain it and it just comes in at the ends so what you end up with is when you look at the back of a have a look and you'll see what I mean look at a, a TD5 onwards Land Rover you'll see that the, the, the where the back door is if it's a van the back door goes along straight on the body and then you've got the lights on either side if you look down below the lights you'll see the cross member curves in um, and it sort of goes in by about, I don't know, six to ten millimetres either side. So it leaves the vulnerable aluminium body out, overhanging. Um, and I just think it looks crap. I just think it looks absolutely awful. The Japanese wouldn't do it. They wouldn't let a vehicle go out like that, I don't think. But um, Land Rover obviously didn't care. Um, you'll also see that all the welds on here are every single weld, like every single weld. Um, the paint's all flaked off. You can see all around here. Where I'm pointing to now, you can see everywhere there's a weld. You know, look at here, every single place is rusty um, because they don't do any prep. They, they, I don't think they even wire brush it off. There's uh, weld spatter you can flick off with your finger, the rest of it is just tap it with the chisel, it comes off. Um, it's it's awful. And, um, yeah, I'm on my eye horse. <laughs> I'm disgusted by it. It's absolutely disgusting. So, um, anyway, this, this rear cross member. Um, I've, I've done a little bit of work on the underside and now I'm about to start on the top. So I'm going to take you over to the chassis, show you what I've done, show you some tooling I've made and talk about where we go from here. Okay, so here we can see the chassis up on its rotisserie. There's Jess, I'm about to go and have a look on the bench. Um, she loves to go look on the bench, I'll be so careful what's up there. But um, I'm going to see if she's going to jump up there, is she? I think the, the, the seat is too far away. But anyway, um, back to here, you can see what I've done. First thing, you've got this stiffener plate which is welded all the way around here onto the chassis on the rear cross member. Remove that and I found underneath was rusty. You can see there's wax oil here. You can see the wax oil under my thumb. Um, but it didn't manage to creep in underneath all these chassis rails and stuff. So in there was some rust. So what I intend to do now is thin the wax oil with turpentine, which I've done before. Um, and it works, thin the wax with the turpentine, flood it into these areas, plug all the holes, let it really soak in and it will capillary into the tiny little gaps and save that rusting again. So I'll remake these plates and weld them back on. So that's that done. Um, you can see here, I'll show you on the other side how they look before you start. What I've done, I've gone in here with a 20mm hole saw to basically separate this sheet metal of the bumper of the um, cross member from this sheet metal here. So basically this needs to go that way because I want to pull the end of the cross member that way to pull it straight. So cut away the weld there where it's welded to the end. Cut away the welds here where it's welded to these this plate here. It's welded up in, in that corner. So cut through from the outside and again here cut through from there. Then thought well, I didn't need to because I've actually cut across here because it's bent from this hole. It's it's straight all the way along until you get to here and then it goes in a bit and then it really goes in here. So I've got a feeling that these welds here are what I've actually pulled it in. Um, not too sure, but uh, 
basically looking at it again in hindsight what I should have done was left that weld there left those welds there and just literally gone across here and cut this away here and let this move away and then fill in that gap that's left made a load of work by getting a hole saw and cutting all this out now I've got to weld all that back in weld this back in here I've made a load of work for myself that I needn't have done the other thing I've got to do now is actually I want to get some weld in here in this, in this little area here and on this side over here um, because remember the the whole chassis is supported off this cross member and all I'm actually left with are these welds in here there's vertical welds there on that gusset so no doubt that's strong enough but it may well flex because it's only going to be held there and there it could actually go out of square it could do this basically because it's only held in two points so my, I need to go along here with a weld just to back that up and stop it twisting um, so yeah basically should have gone straight across here rather than cutting out there oh, and you're wondering why it's such a massive hole what I've done is a 20 mil hole saw and then I think it was a 26 mil hole saw and then what you end up with is you end up with this okay so you can actually that piece of metal comes out of that hole and that gives you movement then so you can move around obviously if you just did a 20 mil hole you'd only have whatever the thickness of the blade is to actually move it and it needs to go a bit more than that I think so um that's why I did that you can see I've got a little bit too far and you can also see that on the inside here inside the chassis you've got this oh, you've got this stiffener plate here which is also welded to the jacking tube and that goes up it's flanged here okay there's a flange there and that's flanged up under there so you've got two skins to go through in this, sorry, this is terrible filming guys. Two skins to go through on this one and one skin to go through on that one. I've gone a little bit too far on that one, you can see I've gone through. But you can see the shape of this plate here, that's that angle and that straight line there, that's that plate there. So um, I'll flip it over now and show you the other side. This is how good this rotisserie is, you just literally just flip the chassis over like so. There we go, we're the right way up now. I'm just going to put this pin in here. Once I get it over enough. There we go. So, on the top we've got the same. It's easier to see the other side, it's a lot neater. Whoever did this side was a butcher. This side is much tidier. Um, so here, you can see we've got these three circular welds where you've got a like a 20 millimeter hole in the, in the cross member and then they've welded around to weld into this sheet metal bracket here and in between there on this side just on the outer one again you've got this gusset here which basically comes along and goes under so the first thing we need to do is there's there's a weld under here going along there so I'm going to cut through there and then what I was going to do was cut this one out cut across here cut across there just down through the first skin and let the cross member come away but uh, second thoughts, don't worry about drilling all this out, don't worry about cutting along there. I'm just going to slit along there and then slit right the way along there. Okay, and then all of this here, so you've got these three welds here, these welds here on the rear body support, this weld all the way under here on this, um, on this gusset, that can all stay and then we can just move the cross member away. Right, so once all this is cut, the whole object of the exercise is to push this end of the cross member that way and obviously holding that in place while you're welding it's going to be a nightmare so I thought I'll make up some kind of jig and I thought probably the strongest point to come off of is here this corner here where the spring mount is so what I've done is made up a jig that bolts in here bolts into the end of the cross member and goes in there and will actually push it apart and I'll just show you what I've made this was an old aluminium block I had lying around it was like a t-section um, with a hole in the middle on each end you can see there's remains of the hole there and then there's the, the hole in the other side I just milled a slot in it drilled through drilled and tapped a couple of M10 holes I got some short M10 bolts in there and there's an old metric crappy rod end lying around I've used here which gives it so it puts pressure on but it doesn't actually so as the pressure is applied with the rod end the pressure will always be applied 
in one direction like so it won't actually have any twisting motion in it at all so basically that bolts the end of the cross member and this will actually then go up against the the chassis like so okay and then this end will, will force it right there so let me show you how it all goes right so you can see with this bracket here i've got one hole in the bottom two holes in the top um, and basically that's because when you go in here these holes are actually angled the out the upper hole is outboard of the the lower hull so um it's the same on the outside as well so basically we got we got that hole for this side and that hole for the other side so we can we've got an angle on the bottom so it can be used on either side now the best way to get these bolts in i found i've got a 17 mil ratchet spatter with a stop in the back of it so the bolt doesn't fall through so i can just pass that bolt through there grab it and then go inside and screw that into there just a couple of threads and then move that out of the way do the same on the top one don't know why i'm going through all this really because Probably no one else on this planet is mental enough to do this. It um, seems like a hell of a lot of work just to get over a, you know, a, 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 a bit of a bend in a cross member, but it just drives me bloody mental when I look at it. Just, just, it's so, it's just so tacky. <laughs> And there we go, that's on in place now. Another thing worth considering while the camera's here, you've got this exhaust bracket on this side, so make sure if you're doing this, keep this below that because you don't want to be that to be getting in the way of your rod. All right, so on this end of the rod, this was a, an old half inch UNF um, female rod end. So what I've done is I've just put a, um, I've turned the head down of a bolt, banged it into this tube, and then put a knot on there as a stop. So basically what I do is wind this right in, like so, and then this goes this way up to keep this, to keep it parallel. And also you don't want to be pushing the cross member up or down. And then what we can do is angle that back like so. Put this on the end of that rod end. Like so. Okay, and then we wind this out basically so that we're pushing the pushing this tube into the corner and wedging it in okay so this thread here is doing all the work at the moment okay so with that wound out then we can come along with a 19 mil spanner three quarter 19 mil because this is 12 mil and i can wind on there and that will actually push i could hold this one with a another three quarter spanner but this will actually push that that cross member out so once it's all cut and everything then we can push it out get it into shape perhaps push it a little bit too far put some tacks on undo it check it push it out again and basically clamp it and hold it in place while it's welded and then it should be okay so um let's see how we get on And there we go that's the inside of the chassis welded up i've um, also like areas where i touch with the cutting disc i've just welded up and filled those areas in but um yeah nice big fat weld on there nice big fat weld on there um doesn't look very pretty but it's got a plate going over it anyway so I'm not too worried about it um 
And again, over here, I've welded in where, where I actually uh, managed to um, just touch it with the cutting wheel. So there we go. So let's get doing some cutting on this chassis now. Right then, guys, here we go. Um, done one side. We cut one side. I'm not welded anything. But there it is, jacked out in position. Um, I'll move the camera in a minute and show you in more detail exactly what I've done. But um, just look at how this beam sits. Now, this is this L-shaped bracket on here. This runs the length of the uh, cross member. And this is what the body bolts to through here. And um, if you remember years ago, Land Rover used to weld tabs onto the cross member to attach the body. And obviously they decided that they'd stop doing that so to allow them to make bolt, to, um, to allow them to be a cross member like a banana. So um, <clears throat> that's why they now have this bracket. Now in a minute, I'll show you the other end. Look at this end here. And if you follow it along, sort of up to the center um, and just past the center, it's kind of, you can see that it's, um, it's flush all the way down. Let me grab a straight edge and I can show you. That, um, it's, it's actually flush with the, um, the back of the cross member all the way along. Okay, I'm gonna get down to here. So you've got a massive gap where this end of the cross member is turned in. So um, this was the objective of the exercise. Um, I've also got some string here, so you can see here, if I pull the string taut, um, <clears throat> you'll see that I ignore this end because sort of beyond this point here, it's all bowed. But if you look at it here, as it touches here, there you go, it's touching here. So. We've got it nice and straight. Now there is a slight depression here because here down here there are two vertical welds inside inside this box section area, which I can't get to. Now I could slice down through here to get to them, but that would mean then a really, really professional, beautiful grinding sanding finish to get a lovely finish on there. Possibly have to use some fill or whatever to get a nice finish. I don't want to do that. Um, I think I'll probably leave it because the depression is like um it's it's next to nothing it's it's like you know maybe a millimeter the thing is it's the ends that matter um you know you're not going to see a lot of this anyway because the spare wheels hanging over and everything but it's these ends that matter so we'll see we'll see how the other side look if the other side looks worse then i will cut down there and then i have to do the, um, the the dressing and stuff and give it a very light skim of filler i expect but um there we go let the cat get the camera off the stand and i'll show you what, I've, what sort of a mess i've made here Oh, one more thing I want to show you. Okay, so I've got my spanner here. I'm going to come along and I'm going to wind this, this nut out. And you'll see, you should be able to see the cross room. Hopefully that beam will stay where it is. Now the beam's coming with it. So there we go, that's loose now. So if I set the beam up now parallel to the centre section of the chassis, you can see just what sort of a difference it's made. You can see that step there now, that huge step. That's how much. Okay, so here we go. This is the um, this is the area of the chassis that's been cut, and you can see the the area of the crosser that's been cut, and you can see it's not particularly tidy. Um, schoolboy error. I measured in. There's a there's a vertical member under here. Get back here. There's a vertical member under there. I measured from the back of the chassis forward, and then forgot to take away the fix the material. So. Had to grind two slots to get in front of that in front of that area. Grind down here, you can see I've gone straight through. Um, and then you've got the, the, the two weld, the two um, cuts here. That's either side of the weld. There was a weld on that bracket under there, and then a single weld on this side of this bracket. So that's that cutaway, and that allows all of the the bulkhead to move around those um, around those welds rather than have it pinched there and sort of end up putting kinks and stuff. So. Um, I'll just show you now how much it all moves. So if I just hold the camera here, my one is come along and, and do this nut up down here. So if I can hold the camera steady, you should be able to see it start to move. There we go, and you can see now that it's, you see how much wider that gap is now? Where am I? Here. Um, see how much wider that gap is now. And basically now we've got the straight, the straight cross member rather than the, the bowed in then like you can see there perhaps. That one's bowed in. This one's straight. And now once again we're back with the, um, with the body mounting. 
crack it on and you can see here lovely and flush and if we go all the way down you can see it's lovely and flush all the way across until we get to this end and this is the side that hasn't been done and you can see there we've got that huge step there and obviously it just gets more and more as it comes out here the actual bend is around about here so it's, it's actually quite a steep angle so by the time you get back to here it's about six six eight mil maybe even ten so that's the bit it's hanging inside the body by so um we'll get this bit done tomorrow and then we'll start looking at some welding but when you look down the down the cross from now you can see that side is straight you can see that's straight okay and when we look down this end Not straight. Beer o'clock. All done. Not welded, but quite happy with how that's gone. Bit of a mess, but you know, it's all going to be welded. And one of the beauties about doing this is all of that welding that you do, none of it will be seen because obviously this I'm now sat inside the back wheel arch. So the back wheel is here, so you're not going to see any of that. Everything on the top is um, covered by the body and everything underneath is well it's underneath so yeah if, if you decide to do this I would suggest doing the same as I did on the top just cut along and leave those circular welds alone um, it's a lot of work a lot of time a lot of wasted effort really and then a lot of welding to repair so um, I may end up pulling it back in we'll see um, I just want to say one thing there are a lot of you out there that are gonna think oh my god you're mental What's the point in cutting up your bloody chassis just to do this? Um, if that's what you think, that's fine. You're probably right. I probably am. You know, who else would do this? I must be crazy. I know that Black Wolf over on Defender2.net, he said that this issue really bugs him as well. So maybe he'll do it. But um, it's a pretty major <laughs> operation, I've got to be honest. But basically, I just want to say, if you are watching this on YouTube and... Well, you're not going to be watching it anywhere else, are you? But if, yeah, if you're watching this and you think, oh my God, you're mental, you're stupid, keep those thoughts to yourself. I don't need to see them. Um, you know, I, I don't care if you think I'm mental. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the world and you won't offend me. So, you know, what's the point in writing it? If you're going to write anything, write something nice. Hey, just, just, there's enough um, crap going around on YouTube and my other channel at the moment. It's, it's, it's absolutely dire. It's terrible. So, um, yeah, so... Uh, that's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is if any of you go on Facebook and you're on Angry Pumas, um, if you could send them a link to this site, I'd be really, really grateful because um, I'm sure there'd be a lot of people on there who'd be interested to see this because it's a, it's a Puma build after all. And then we've you know, got the Puma gearbox, we've got the, the Puma transfer box, which is an RT230, it's the same, but all this work with the body work and everything as well, you know, it's all sort of, a lot of it is Puma specific. Um, and there we go. So tomorrow I'll probably get on with some welding. But we shall see. Or maybe just cut the other side up and see how we go. Hopefully the other side will be a lot neater. Um, I wish I'd done the same on the bottom. Just done one side at a time. Uh, and then I probably wouldn't have bothered cutting it all about like I have. But anyway, um, I've got all the time in the world. It's, uh, it's Well, not all the time in the world, but all the time that I've got left on the planet. Um, so basically, yeah. Uh, Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you have a go with yourself if it really bugs you and you're mental like me. But um, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, the other thing I want to say is sorry about all the crap camera work. That was pretty poor, some of that camera work. But uh, hopefully you got a gist of what it is I'm doing. Bye for now.